All right, well, now we're being asked to uh, write equations in standard form. And standard form uh, is in the form of AX plus BY equals C. And um, really, uh, standard form is really, I'm not sure it's really all that practical. I think, if anything, uh, well, it, it's definitely going to help with some just basic algebraic skills as you have to try to convert equations into standard form. That may be the most obvious use of standard form because most of the time we're going to use slope intercept or point slope or something else. Um, although I guess, you know, when we get into uh, finding X and Y intercepts, it uh, might be a little bit useful there as far as in standard form. So let's take a look at what the standard form is and then we'll have a couple of examples. All right, well, we're going to look at here at standard form and first we're going to go over some rules. Uh, that we have to go by in order to write something in standard form. But just to begin with, again, as a reminder, standard form is AX plus BY equals C. And there's three rules that we have to go by to properly put something in standard form or rewrite it in standard form. Uh, one, A, B, and C all have to be integers, no fractions. They all have to be integers. A, that lead coefficient A, uh, is to be a positive number. And then thirdly, that the greatest common factor for all, for, for A, B, and C is one. So as an example, if I've got standard form of 3X plus 5Y equals seven, well, the greatest common factor of three, five, and seven is one. Three times one is three, five times one is five, seven times one is seven. And the greatest common factor I've got is one. Now, I could have a situation where, I, let's say, I've got uh, A is equal to three and Y is equal to six and uh, C is equal to nine. Well, there I've got a common factor, something greater than one, because three times one is three, but two times three is six and three times three is nine. And to reduce that to where I've got to have a common factor of one, well, then I need to divide all three of those terms by three uh, to get that to a common factor of one. We'll see an example of that in a moment. Well, let's look at a couple of what uh, may be simpler uh, examples of converting an equation into standard form. Let's first look at this equation here on the left uh, where we've got uh, 2y is equal to uh, 4x plus 5. So to put that in standard form, I'm just going to rewrite that. I'm going to move the X over across the equal sign because of course that's going to change that from uh, 4X to minus 4X. So now I've got minus 4X plus 2Y equals five. But now remember, one of my rules is that, uh, I mean, I've met the rule here that all of them are integers. I mean, four, two, five, they're all integers. Minus four is an integer. But that, that minus 4X, right, there is violating one of my rules is that a going back here to standard form a needs to be positive so what i can do is i can multiply the whole mess by negative one to make that 4x positive and as long as i'm doing everything the same operation to everything in the equation uh, i can do that and i will still have a true statement and so when i multiply by negative one well, then it, I am able to change the signs and I get 4X minus 2Y equals minus 5. I have now put this in proper standard form. And where A is equal to 4, B is equal to minus 2, and C is equal to minus 5. Absolutely thrilling. All right, let's take a look here then at the uh, second equation, the one on the right. Uh, so here I've got 3X minus 6Y minus nine equals zero. Well, first thing I've got to do is move that minus nine across the equal sign so that I can get it in this proper, begin to start getting this in AX plus BY equals C. So then I've got now right here, I would have three X minus six Y equals nine. And I could think that I'm almost done, but I am not quite done because the greatest common factor of three, six and nine is not one, the greatest common factor of three, six, and nine is three. So to remedy that, 
I could actually multiply the whole mess by one third, or I could look at that as I'm dividing it all by three. But if I'm if I'm dividing by three, I am in fact doing the same thing if I multiply everything by one third. So I'm gonna multiply everything in that equation by one third so I can get to the common greatest common factor of one. And when I do, I'm gonna end up here with x minus two y equals three. So three times one third is one, minus six times one third is minus two, nine times one third is three, and I've got it here, x minus two y equals three, where a is equal to one, b is equal to minus two, c is equal to three. But like I said, I mean, I guess probably one of the greatest purposes here is to help with our some of our basic algebraic skills, and there's nothing wrong with that. Okay, so let's look at a couple of uh, maybe a little bit more difficult ones. And um, so let's look here at one of the left. I'm given here 10y minus 3x plus 6 equals 11. All right, well, the first thing I'm going to do is I need to get that 6 and move it over so I can get all my constants, my c values over on one side. And so I do that right here, and I got, now I've got 10y minus 3x equals 5 because I subtracted 6 from both sides. I subtracted the 6 from the 11. It gives me 5. And also here in this next step, I went ahead and rearranged it to get in my x's out front. So now I've got minus 3x plus 10y equals 5. And I've got a violation of a rule here because this minus 3x is a negative, and I've got to have that a value, if you will, in this standard form to be a positive. And just like what we did on the previous slide, I can multiply the entire equation by minus one. And when I do that, then I'm gonna end up here with three X minus 10 Y equals minus five. And so here I've got A is equal to three, B is equal to minus 10, and C is equal to minus five. And we've taken this and we have put this in standard form. Now let's look at this next one. And it is a big, big mess. I've got two-thirds y minus three-fourths x plus one-six equals zero. Now, let's just kind of take this step by step. I see I made an error here when I wrote on the board. We'll correct it when we get down here to the bottom. Um, didn't change my signs down there at the bottom. You'll see what I mean here in a moment. All right, let's move this one-sixth over, positive one-sixth. And I, when I move it across the equality, now I'm going to end up here with Minus, and I went ahead and rearranged my x and y's right here. So now I got minus three fourths x plus two thirds y equals minus one sixth. So now I've, I've still got a big, huge mess here. And I'm looking at these denominators and I'm trying to think what is the least common denominator that fits all of these four, three, and six? Well, I could come up with 12. 4 times 3 is 12, 3 times 4 is 12, 6 times 2 is 12. So now I want to convert all of those fractions into twelfths. And we'll see why I want to do that in a moment. And I can do that by multiplying. I can multiply this 3 fourths x by 3 over 3. Now 3 over 3 is really just 1. I haven't really changed the value. I'm going to change the expression, but I haven't changed the value. And I can multiply this two-thirds y by four over four. And I can multiply this minus one-six by two over two. And I can get all my denominators into twelfths. And then I can begin to start finally unraveling this mess. So remember now, if I'm multiplying fractions and fractions, it's numerator times denum numerator, denominator times denominator, I'm trying to get it to where I can get to the least, to the greatest common factor of one. And so when I multiply three thirds, three over three by minus three over four, I get minus nine twelfths. When I multiply four over four times two thirds, I get eight twelfths. And when I multiply minus one six times two over two, I get minus two twelfths. Now, if you look at that and you reduce each of those fractions, you see I haven't changed the value at all. Minus nine over 12 is the same thing as minus three fourths. And eight over 12 is the same thing as two thirds. And minus two over 12 is the same thing as one sixth. I really haven't changed anything, but I have gotten them in a common denominator. Now, why did I want to do that? 
because I've got to get all of these into integers. I've got to get the fractions out of there. If I can get them to a common denominator, then I can multiply the entire mess by what that denominator is and cancel all these denominators out. And that's my goal. But I have a second goal here, and that's why I'm multiplying this whole thing by minus 12. Because you see, I got a minus 9 twelfths right here. And I got to get that to a positive number. So if I multiply the entire expression here, or the entire equation, by minus 12, I can accomplish two things. I can get rid of all the denominators, and I can get a positive number here for x. Now, about to come up where I made a mistake when I wrote this board that I see when I look at this. But we'll correct it. All right, so if I multiply nine, minus 12 times minus 9 over 12, the 12 cancel, I'm left with a positive 9. And if I multiply, if I distribute, I should say, let's just say distribute, and I mean it's a proper word, better, better word, minus 12 times 8 over 12, uh, I am going, the 12s are going to cancel. However, I'm not going to have a positive 8. I've got to have a negative 8 right there. That's negative 12. Negative times that positive is going to give me a negative number. And the same thing uh, when I multiply 12 times minus 12 times minus 2 over 12, I'm going to end up with positive 2 plus 2, not negative 2, positive 2. And you got to watch these signs. It'll trip you every time. And so when I do that, I have now got this thing in proper standard form where I got 8 equals 9, B equals minus 8, not 8, and C equals positive 2. I caught myself in my error, but we do have it in standard form, proper standard form. Hallelujah.